The next bit of kit that I'm going to test out is something that most DJs who've used hardware like CDJs in the past are probably already familiar with. It is Pioneer's record box software. Now I've never attempted actually mixing inside it before so let's give it a go and see how I get on. So this is Pioneer's record box. Now any DJ that's used a USB on a set of CDJs before will be pretty familiar with this software. I use a record box for setting up USBs. Um, I like to have USBs with me even though I'm a Serato user myself. I always like to have a backup of my set on USB just in case there's any kind of technical issue. And also it's good to have some tunes on a USB. You never know you bump into a friend and end up playing a back to back. As we can see, like Serato, they have loaded in some sounds and tracks for us. So I'm going to load demo track one onto the left deck and demo track two onto the right deck. Now it's telling me here that this track is uh, 120 beats per minute and this one's 128. Um, but it seems to be synced. So if we set this to the master, you can see there that it's already synced up. Um, because beat sync is hit. If we take beat sync off, take master off. Yeah, you can see here, 120, 128. Now, if we hit beat sync here, this should turn to 128, which it looks like it has done. I'm going to play this track. Let's get our crossfader over, and let's see if we can lock in a fairly clean mix. We've got our sound effects loaded in here. You can drag and drop those too. Just get them horns out. Sirens. Always nice. Nice and easy to play with those. So I'm going to attempt to mix here again without any headphones. Um, just looking. You know, you can see where the downbeats are. You're just waiting for one of them to come in. I'm going to hit play now. And that is locked. Now, is that pure luck or no? Because this one is coming at 128. So it's already synced up to the track that's playing. So we'll, rec we'll do a mix and then we will attempt to do it back the other way around, slowing the other track down. Or speeding it up rather. Cut the bass out. Everything's locked in. For the sake of the demo, let's just play this one over here. And we're going to hit pause on this there. Maybe skip it back to the beginning of the track. Now this one's automatically set as the master. Now if I load the same track back in, you can see it's 120 beats per minute, but it's currently playing at 128. So if I hit this beat sync, it should automatically bring this up. It looks like it's done that now. So it's matching. Now these are the two same tracks, but we could see by hitting that beat sync button, it syncs everything up. And just by hitting play on one of these down beats, it should snap it all back in time again. Now look at that, it's out of sync. So if I hit this beat sync, I'd imagine they snap back. There you go. Bang in time. And it's the same track. So nice and easy to use. Pretty clean. Interface is nice and clean. And I think it's an added bonus that it kind of looks like the CDJs, which are what anyone getting to grips with DJing will obviously be kind of looking to graduate to. You know, a lot of this stuff that you're looking at now is going to look a little bit more familiar when you do eventually have a go on CDJs. So that about wraps things up for Record Box. A decent bit of kit to have whether you're using it for virtual DJing or just for preparing your tracks before you go and practice on a set of actual CDJs. So that was Record Box, our fourth piece of kit that we've checked out. Um, I hope you found a few bits that might pique your interest or maybe tease you into having a little go yourself. All of these bits of software have their pros and cons and I don't think there's a specific standout. They're all, they all do bits and bobs that the others don't. So I think it's good to have a go at some different ones and just find what works best for you really. But that about wraps up four bits of kit 
all free to download and have a go yourselves. Get DJing, get creative, and get their mixes out there.